In this video, I'll show you how I made these custom professional looking drawer inserts for my studio gear using a cheap secondhand cabinet, some EVA floor mats, and a laser cutter. Let's get started. Okay, there's a lot of things you've seen already on the Makers Muse YouTube channel, but one thing you haven't seen yet is the storeroom. This room sees constant use. I have all of my audio stuff stored here and I come and go as I'm filming for the channel and it's just completely disorganized. And the battery situation is even worse. This is the battery charging station. And initially it was a nice little compact organized unit with the power strip on the side and the charges and I could even take it with me to events. And for example, this is the, the battery charger for the Panasonic uh, Lumix G7. I'll charge the battery, but then I'll just sort of put it in the box and that's a problem because there's other batteries in the box and I don't know if these are charged or if they're flat and this has crept up over time to become a really big problem because I need to be time efficient when I'm filming for the channel and I'm spending so much time trying to find lenses trying to find the right audio gear trying to find batteries that are charged or not so I need to come up with a good solution and I think I have one I found this metal cabinet secondhand for $15 Australian and it's exactly what I was looking for to store the gear I need on the channel. I have at least two smaller drawers at the top and this larger one at the bottom if I need it. But I can't just chuck the gear in here because it's just going to roll around, it's going to get damaged and it's not going to really solve my problem any more than just having it on the shelf in the storeroom. So I need those custom inserts and I've always sort of wanted them but it wasn't until I made my custom Halloween uh, demonetization hammer that I realized that cutting EVA foam on a laser cutter was so incredibly easy. It creates a really clean cut, it's quick, it's fairly odorless, it does have a smell when it's cutting, but when it's done it doesn't have any smell at all basically. So I've been meaning to try this process with custom inserts for some time, but the first thing we need to do is draw them up. I've gone through all of my gear and found the stuff that I need to have on hand the most. For example, my, my most used lenses and the audio gear that I'll swap in for different videos. And I want these things on hand in the drawer organized at all times. Uh, but for the camera, for example, it's usually on the tripod. It's big. I'm not going to lose it. So it can sit on the shelf if I need to. I'm not going to try to put this in the drawer. But yeah, for the smaller stuff, I want it organized. And you might be asking, what's the easiest way to draw the cutouts for these custom inserts? And the simple answer is there isn't really an easy way. It really depends on what you're trying to do. For me, I've just gone ahead and modeled these in. Like the lenses are just very simple. I can use calipers to find out the size of the circle I need. For the batteries, they're quite simple. You know, some of the battery outlines are a little bit more complicated than others, but I've just drawn them in. But if you have something that's very organic and complicated, like a set of spanners, for example, I've been told the best solution to get those drawn in is to actually get a piece of paper and the actual tool and then trace around the outline with a pen. And then you want to do what you want to do is scan that piece of paper into the computer with a ruler uh, on the on the scanner bed as well. Then you can use a sketch picture or similar to scale that image correctly using the ruler as a reference. And then you can use software to either convert those drawn lines into vectors or you can just manually trace over them again and then adjust them in your chosen software. And you really want to take your time in the design stage here to double check your dimensions and make sure things are kind of organized in a way that makes sense for you. Things that are used more often up front, for example, and also things that are very thin like this, uh, this little shotgun microphone, for example, if it's in the foam, it's going to be hard to get out. So I've designed in little finger grips here for that, but it's not too big a deal because the foam's very cheap and you can even chuck the sheet back in the laser cutter to cut out more details as long as you have a reference mark to line everything up. Uh, I'm using Fusion 360 for this because I'm familiar with it and I have it. But you definitely don't need expensive 3D software to do this. You can use stuff like Inkscape because that's a vector program because all you need at the end is either a DXF or a SVG vector file, which then we can send to the laser cutter to then cut out our pattern in the EVA foam. The laser cutter I'm using is the Flux Beanbox Pro. I reviewed it here if you want to check it out. It's a fantastic laser cutter, a little bit expensive, but very, very easy to use. But something I just want to point out really quickly is that cutting order is really important. When you export a DXF, for example, you should be able to export the cutout separate to the actual perimeter. And you really want to make sure the laser cuts the cutouts first 
and then does the final outline, the perimeter cut to free that insert. Because if it does the outline first, the sheet can start to move around. The foam's quite light and generally the sheets aren't very flat and then the cutouts won't be as accurate. So you wanna make sure it does the cutouts first, then the perimeter. And yeah, in terms of fume extraction, I have this thing venting outside. As I said, it does make some odor, but it's not overwhelming. Just make sure you safely vent. I have found with the laser focus with the really thick EVA sheets, I go down a little bit into the sheet. So the focus point is a little bit into the material, not right on the surface, but really it does cut so easily. My settings here are like 15% power and 20 millimeters a second speed and it cuts through like butter with a really clean edge. And if you're looking for a business opportunity in 2021, you could do this all day. The laser would pay itself off so quickly. And after a quick test fit, all that's left to do is to put it all together. have it it's incredibly easy to make custom inserts for a toolkit or a cabinet for your fragile gear or tools using a laser cutter and these inexpensive EVA foam floor mats um, there's a few things I've probably changed with these inserts I've done uh, I can't get access to the metal box easily at the back of the top here for example and some of the lenses are quite sort of stubby so I might actually need little finger grabby holes to help me pull them out of their inserts. And in terms of layers, I only did one layer for the audio gear section because the uh, the microphones are quite thin. But I did do two layers for the section with the lenses just to give them a bit more support and also the batteries to make sure they always stay upright. I'm not gonna try to store the camera in this cabinet because it's just always on the tripod. You're watching me on it right now. But I have this whole extra drawer down the bottom I haven't even used for anything yet. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. I might make it like a two tier stack system with custom inserts or custom boxes. Not sure yet, but I'm just really happy how compact this is and it's gonna make my life a lot easier, bring content to you guys quicker and more streamlined in the year ahead. So if you found this video useful, maybe because of subscribing to Maker's Muse, that's my aim to empower your creativity through technology or like even my own creativity, like this is going to definitely help me out quite a bit. Either way, I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.